Hey guys, welcome back to Iron Griffin Studio. So this week I've been continuing with the kind of creepy courtyard theme uh, and I've made this little fountain and it's, you know, hexagonal shape, bit of water effects, kind of grimy and green and alginous and this little statue on top, bronze kind of heavily patinaed statue and uh, yeah, pretty sweet, really quite like it. So. Let's get on with it, shall we? Okay, so a while ago I used this little device here to help uh, as a guide when cutting some hexagonal pieces during my Dungeon Pillars video. Uh, there's prongs on top, just stab into the XPS form and you can cut some small hexagons uh, using this as a guide. However, this wasn't going to work for this video uh, because these hexagons are much bigger and it was just impossible to get a nice uh, clean even hexagon so I opted instead to draw. So I took a protractor and a ruler and a nice sharp knife and I cut out uh, several hexagons. I, I took um, three pieces of 5 mil XPS form and cut out three hexagons exactly the same. To be honest a much quicker and easier way of doing this would be to print out a hexagon on your computer and just trace around it and cut it out afterwards. So using a sharp knife, I took several passes along the edges here. This thickness of the hexagon frame is literally just for the thickness of the brick. So it's whatever you want it to be. Mine is about a centimeter thick. So I've got two layers there and they sit nicely on the bottom layer. And then I just etched in using an X-Acto knife some very tiny, uh, around about one millimeter deep uh, cuts, and then just kind of beveled them with a beveling tool to make them nice and deep. And then I used an aluminium ball for texture on the inside and the outside of the bricks. Be very careful doing the outside of the bricks, you've got to really brace that form from the inside so that you don't just absolutely destroy it with any even small amounts of pressure. And then I textured the bottom layer as well, all across the top, because it will be seen through the water most likely once this thing is assembled. Then I took the aluminium ball and also textured a few pieces of off cuts. These are only a few millimeters thick and these are going to serve as kind of finishing slabs along the top of the fountain wall. And I'm gluing the whole thing together with a bit of hot glue. Using the hexagonal guide from the beginning of the video I was able to create these perfect little XPS form hexagons. Uh, to create a nice plinth just for the center of the fountain uh, for a little model to go and stand on. Now I got this little Age of Sigma Stormcast Eternal guy from the magazine Mortal Realms while ago so I thought I'm going to use him because I've got nothing else to use him for. And then I etched in a few simple designs just to add some texture to the plinth and I deepened them with the beveling tool. And since this is kind of an abandoned fountain, a little bit disused and unattended, I figured I would add some kind of sludgy, slime, muddy kind of griminess to the edges of it and in the corners. So I took a bit of PVA glue, smeared it all around the areas that I thought might accumulate a bit of grime and dirt, and then I applied some sand. I 
and as usual the standard XPS foam undercoat is black paint and Mod Podge. Matte Mod Podge specifically, uh, this just protects the foam and gives a good surface for paint to adhere to. And then it was time for a good heavy overbrush of a medium grey just to get a nice solid stone colour. You can see there a lot of the details are now starting to get picked out. Now as per usual with stonework I tend not to leave it just basic grey so I added a few little spots of browns and tans and things like that just to add a little bit of warmth and colour variation. Uh, to the rocks, after all not all rocks are grey, there's a lot of browns and earthy tones in them. And then it was time for my black brown wash, or at least I tried, until it was blocked. So, never mind, take two, black brown wash, all over the whole thing and stippled on to get a nice even effect and no brush marks. Now statues have limiting materials because you can either say stone or bronze, maybe marble, but I wanted this to be in keeping with the theme and I think stone would also look a little bit too um, the same as the fountain, so I'm using bronze to cover the entire statue. And then once that was dry I used Citadel's Nylac Oxide to cover the whole thing in this kind of verdigris uh, bronze patina uh, that gives the nice impression of an oxidized uh, copper that's, that's in the bronze and then you just dab it away with a piece of clean kitchen towel or something and then hopefully what's left is this nice uh, green coppery patina. And with that wash on the fountain finally dry I was able to move on to adding some Kind of algae and green slime to the fountain. So I'm using some Anthonian camo shade here from the Citadel range. This is a wash and as I found out it was just a little bit too thin and way too subtle for this effect. It seemed to be basically invisible once I put it on so then I switched to contrast plague bearer and uh, this was a lot better and I believe I actually added a little bit of uh, an even thicker darker green paint to this to really really sell the the green slime that would accumulate around the edges of the stone. Now I wanted to add a little bit of water and it needs to be super clear so I'm using this uh, CFS water clear epoxy two-part resin and it's uh, this is equally mixed in 50-50 volume and you stir it nice and gently and then you can add any kind of acrylic paints to this and it takes it really easily really well and colors it really nicely. You don't however need to use too much paint. A few drops in a cup this size or with this much resin uh, is more than enough as you'll see. And I just added a little drop of much darker green there. I think that was a Lauren Forest green, I think, from Citadel range. Probably an old paint, but it's doing the job. And then I very carefully poured it around the rest of the fountain.
And after the water effects had kind of seeped into everywhere it needed to be, I moved it over to a white tray, which is why it's on a white background now, just to make sure that there would be no spillage. Or if there was spillage, it wouldn't get all over my desk. And then I added a few little birch seed leaves and glued the statue in the middle with a bit of super glue. Now I left that for one day to cure and as you can see that resin is real flat, like glass flat. So I'm going to use a bit of gloss Mod Podge, kind of cover the entire surface of it and then use a straw to blow around the Mod Podge and get rid of those textures that the paintbrush tends to make and turn it into more of a rippled effect and blow it right into the corners and things and you get a much nicer feel of the water. Now I'm going to do a little bit of a slimy moss kind of texture so some Woodland Scenics Fine Turf Burnt Grass is what I'm going to be using I'm going to mix that with uh, some gloss Mod Podge. Normally I would use PVA but I think gloss Mod Podge in this situation might be a little bit better and uh, hopefully this will help it sit nicely against the existing gloss Mod Podge that's on the water surface and uh, give a nice uh, wet feel for this moss. And I even sprinkled in a few birch seed leaves for good measure. concentrated a lot of this in the corners where I thought slime and leaves and gunk would generally accumulate but also like clinging to the rocks and working its way up the plinth in the middle and a little bit on the top slabs across the, the top of the wall. Now by now I'm sure some of you have noticed that this fountain has no water spouts or nozzles and I just realised that towards the end of the build so I actually rectified it with some little craft beads and I just poked a little hole using the end of a paintbrush and I just sat the little nozzles in there. Use a little cocktail stick to help me because you know fat fingers and tiny beads don't mix. And then I added a little bit of a patina to them again using the Nanak Oxide. In this shot you can actually really see the effect that the Gloss Mod Podge had on the surface of the water. That's a much better texture now. Alright guys, there we go, all done. So yeah, I, I placed a small uh, cog on his on the base there for the statue. Uh, this was mostly because uh, he didn't stand up straight. His, his base that he comes with is normally um, you know, um, undulating and stuff. So I put a little cog for him to stand on. Also the cog uh, keeps with the theme of the creepy courtyard that I'm going for. Uh, I did a sundial video like two videos ago and um, that had some cog gear like ornate uh, embellishments added to it so um, I continued that with this. Um, yeah I'm pretty happy with it, good patina, looks kind of grimy and weathered, I like that sort of thing. So that's it for this video, if you liked what you watched then please feel free to like, give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already and comment because I like receiving comments and questions and nice things and stuff so feel free to send all those things my way uh, i do also have an instagram set up and also a facebook feel free to follow me on there and i have recently got a patreon set up uh, which i will put 
in the link uh, down below in the description. And uh, if you want to support me, the best way you can do that is through Patreon, and that will help me create more videos like this, or hopefully even better ones in the future. Um, that's all for this one, though. I'll see you again next time. Thanks for stopping by, and happy crafting.